Okay. Good evening, everyone. I apologize for not being able to stream for the past week. I had a little mundane issue, which is getting sick, so there we have it. But now I'm fine. Okay, so now we are going to finish our playthrough with Rebecca's chapter because that was really long. We weren't able to finish it the last time. So I think this would be somewhat a shorter stream because we are just our goal for tonight is to just finish Rebecca's chapter and hopefully not kill her. <laughs> We're glad you're doing fine now. Thank you. So, am I audible enough? Is the game too loud or too silent or is it too quiet? Who's excited for today's stream? It's fine, it's right on the Okay, cool, cool, cool. Okay, let's start. So from last episode, we stopped here because we are going to have a very important decision. We are currently at Rebecca's school where she teaches. I forgot the name, but here we go. If by some miracle he agrees to it, he'll probably be sulking the whole party. Not really a tough choice when you put it like that, but still. Tough choice, but I have to pick one. Okay, guys. Which one do we want to choose? Because <laughs> we literally left the stream here. Do we want to say I have other things to do and go meet Ashton? Or, okay... But only because Kylie asked, and we go with Luke and Kylie. That's a tough choice. Yeah. Okay, so so far the highest relationship is with Isabella. The lowest would be with Marianne. Re it like looks is somewhat higher. What do you guys think? <laughs>
I think if we I think if we go with like Ashton's we would have the talk about the ghost though I guess second choice okay that's one vote if we go with them though we will miss what Ashton's gonna tell us and of course, if we go to Ashton's, like we will miss what happens here. But yeah. <laughs> okay, that's one, one. Like number one. I just need one more vote, guys. <laughs> oh, maybe the first. Okay, we'll pick the first one. <laughs> you changed your mind. <laughs> Though, when you look at it closely, it isn't such a difficult decision to make. First and foremost, no matter where I look at this, it is inappropriate to some degree. Disregarding Luke's honest intentions, I've only known the man for a grand total of two days, including today. If I'm going to be thoroughly specific, I'll give it a grand total around 10 hours. By all means, that's not enough reason for me to join them for dinner, even if he says Kylie is the one who requested it. To other people, it won't appear as innocent as he makes it out to be. And if there's one ugly thing about this city, it's the, this place penchant for inane gossip. One little spark, it'll spread like wildfire. Who knows how far, how far it'll go? How many years it'll reach? What if Ashton hears about it? I'd rather not think about the consequences to that. I've got enough on my plate lately as it is. Being at the center of a rumor mill along with this man, in whatever form it takes, sends unpleasant chills down my spine. Oh, hello. I kind of forgot what happened last time. <laughs> my answer must have already shown in my face as Kylie's smile immediately dissolves into a pout. You're not gonna join us, are you? No, Kylie, we won't. <laughs> sorry, Kylie. I'm sorry, Kylie. I'd love to, but I have other things to do. Another time, maybe? A friend just texted me about something urgent, and he wants to meet tonight. Just say it's a date, Daisy. Who is a rug rat will understand? She's not an infant. No need for blatant lies. He instantly crawls up my face at his 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 baseless in insinuations. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, what I would give for another chance to put a real dent on his skull. I what even gave you that idea? And even if it is, why do you care? Stop sticking your nose in other people's affairs! Been waiting for Rebecca part two. <laughs> oh, your face says it all, woman. You think I won't recognize those longing looks? There isn't a look, you bo- Ugh. <laughs> There isn't a look, alright? <laughs> sure, whatever helps you sleep at night, Daisy. You already have a story written inside that head of yours, don't you? Oh, please. It's not that interesting. The color of your face does suit you, though. Matches the hair. Well, come on now, Munchkin. I'll just buy you an extra glass of that parfait. With extra strawberries? <laughs> I'll get you a basket full if you want. As long as you behave. And no complaints if they don't have enough syrup again. Deal? Deal. Have fun with your date, Miss Pink. Luke's already leading the child away before I can correct her. Upon reaching the end of the hall, however, he doesn't miss the chance to shoot me another one of those infuriating winks. Does he really think women enjoy those? I'd sue him for harassment if I can. Though, I must admit, the two of them walking together hand in hand is an endearing sight in itself. He says he dislikes the idea of having children of his own, but it, 
but it's easy to see some part of him genuinely wants them. What's stopping him? It's something to mule over, along with every other confusing and frustrating thing about this guy. Some other time though, Ashton's waiting. Let's go! <laughs> His car's headlights have been left turned on, illuminating the otherwise empty parking lot. If it's like that, this is probably going to be a quick visit. Although our landlady would probably have a few hundred words to say about this before letting it go. Not many in this complex own a vehicle anyway, to warrant the space, frequent use owing to this area's proximity to downtown Logsburg. No one's going to be disturbed if one car stays parked with its lights on for a few minutes. Right now, though, it serves as a pleasant company while I idle inside my own car, thumbing the invitation's fine print, flipping it over and over until the motions become familiar enough. What should I say? How should I say it? There's a very high chance he'll say no. But on the off chance he accepts, what should I do? Fears. Doubts. Questions I haven't asked before. And more often than not, the anxiety is because of him. Seventeen years ago, I've been in the same position, a different letter in hand. Somehow, nothing has changed. Perhaps if he'd noticed how I've always felt about him years ago, I wouldn't be in this predicament. Honestly, he managed to ace all those exams at school without even lifting a finger, and he couldn't figure this out. How dense can he get? I feel. <laughs> but I can't very well wait for another two decades just for something as measly as an invitation, can I? It's not like it's going to be a date. Although frankly, I wouldn't mind if it is. However... That's a wish best reserved for some other time. I won't get anywhere if I just keep thinking about the what-ifs. Gathering all my thoughts and courage, I step out of my car and gingerly make my way upstairs, inviting in invitation in hand. Ever since the incident three days ago, there's a strange air permitting the atmosphere here. Waited, but the sort that slowly trickles through you until the burden of... It finally bogs you down with some kind of disquiet. The days since have been uneasy, and Isabella's absence from her flat does not help it settle it. Every day, coming home somewhat feels like an uphill battle in itself, leaving you spent when you're supposed to be getting some rest. Is Zachary experiencing the same thing? I certainly am. The same very slump is also on Ashton's shoulders, once I catch a glimpse of him. He's leaning casually on the rails, his back against its metal surface, while reading through a bunch of papers. I think I updated your intro with just now, just checking him out please. Okay, thank you! Each one appears more important than the other, despite me having never read a letter of it. He'll probably head back to the precinct after this, if he's not going to drop by Zachary's for a bit of a shut eye. No rest for the wicked. But no matter how occupied he seems, he pauses anyway and looks up from his work the moment he hears my treads. Meow. <laughs> Fucking read that. <laughs> Hello, Sycamore. <laughs> he raises a hand in greeting as a small smile spreads across his lips. Exhausted as I am, I can't help but return it to him. What brought you here? He hums something inaudible, neither an answer nor even a vague hint before he turns his attention back to the papers. For a passing second, I thought he'd ignore or evade the question like every single time I've asked. But then he shuffles the documents back to a binder and sets it aside with a huff. It sounds 
more fatigued than I've ever heard from him recently. Either there's simply too many things keeping him busy at once, or his investigation isn't going too well. Maybe even both. Just work. Just work? Do you expect me to believe that? In a way, I didn't think an important contact ditched me and now I'm stuck would make for a cool alibi. Did it work? As if there's going to be any difference. You're still a dafty. Uh, anyway, do you want to come in? But if you're going to hang around for a bit, you better turn those headlights off. My landlady's one hairline away from banning you off this place, you know? Stop taking the piss out of her. She's a nice woman. When she stops taking the piss out of Shirley, maybe I will. You and your bloody car. The first time I've ever heard of the name, I did a double take. From the way he put it, it was as if he was talking about some woman he met somewhere, surprisingly got along with and grown fond of. Never mind how impossible that is, knowing his lack of interest for people outside a small circle. Honestly, it sent a surge of panic in me. It lasted for days, until he proudly introduced me to his new car. His car. Hey, it's a nice name. Don't laugh at it. You'll hurt her feelings. I'm gonna have to give that offer a pass, though. Nothing unexpected, but admittedly, I'm hoping he'll stay for a few minutes. Suddenly, asking him to accompany me to some housewarming party is starting to turn into a bad idea. If he can't even be bothered to spare a second of his time to his friends, what more if he has to stand some hours in a room full of strangers? I need to get going. I just dropped in to check on something and... His words trail off, cut mid-sentence on purpose, leaving it for me to comprehend the rest of it. At the same time, his eyes shift momentarily towards the door closest to us. Isabella's unit. Eerily quiet now in her absence. The instant his lips curve into a small frown and his shoulders tense, I know Rick is far from the, his reasons for being here. Being all too aware of that idea alone summons another doll ache straight into my chest. Like every time, every single moment, he affords her the attention he can never seem to spare others. While it is a worry better left for a different situation, it twinges the heart nevertheless. Is there a problem? Nothing of note. Abigail just wanted to ask her a few things. Hello, hello, Mr. Osa. Why do I have to fucking read it like how you guys write it? <laughs> it's related to that incident with Cooper. You heard the one. Hold on. She isn't in trouble, is she? No, I don't think so. Not as far as I know. And do you really think Scaredy Cat can do anything like that? Don't you jealous right now, Rebecca? True. <laughs> True. It's just an off the record thing, okay? Abigail wanted to confirm something. She knows I'm friends with someone working at BRC, so she asked me. Apparently she isn't getting anything from that company, as long as the red tape's in the way. It's nothing urgent, though. She isn't answering her phone again, so I thought I'd check myself. I can wait until she gets home. If she comes home soon. The last time I saw her was two nights ago. His demeanor immediately changes. Despite his careful attempt to appear nonchalant, his eyes scream of an unspoken worry. It's almost painful to see how much he tries to hide it, especially in front of someone he has known for years. What? Did she take a vacation or something? No word from her, unfortunately. And I don't think she'll go on a trip without telling us. It's been two days. Three if she's not going to show up tomorrow either. Do you think we might have to file a missing person report? I hope not. But let me know if anything happens. You know how to contact me. I'll see you later, Becca. Ashton squeezes my shoulder, light as he can, before stepping away and heading straight for the stairs. His way of offering comfort in the middle of this little mess we've found ourselves in. But amidst all this, a tiny voice at the back of my mind nudges at a memory. Something I've forgotten, and the very reason why I've chosen to turn return home early. He's made it four steps down when realization kicks in and awareness of the envelope I've been holding returns to me. 
panic wears before proper words can form, or I can think about the situation. Not a second sooner, I'm calling after him. Ashton, wait! He halts one foot already down on the step when he turns to me raising an eyebrow in question. Yeah? And of all times, it is in this moment when I falter, the adrenaline from the earlier panic suddenly recedes. All of a sudden, none of the things I've prepared to say will take form, and I'm caught between simply forgetting about this or just blurting it out to him while hoping for the best. Should I even? Tomorrow afternoon do you have time? Or forget about it. I wanna say tomorrow afternoon do you have time? <laughs> Let's say that. Because we don't wanna be... We don't wanna be a pussy. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with trying, I suppose. I'm not going to lose anything if he says no. Which frankly has a very high chance of happening than the opposite. Though the thought still doesn't prevent heat from crawling up my face and send my heart racing. It's better to get this over with before my throat closes up and I lose my nerve. Tomorrow afternoon. Do you have time? A small frown is already on his face. I already see where this is going and what he is thinking from that alone. Yet, for some malicious reason, I continue. Hanging on that tiny glimmer of hope, he'll say yes if I present an argument good enough for him. That depends. Why? Well, you see, someone sent an invite for a housewarming party, and I thought you might want to... Rebecca, I'd rather stand on the messy end of a gunshot. You know that. I know, it's just you're one of the few people I can count on with things like this. That's cool, I appreciate the thought, but really, Zack's a better companion. Gatherings like that just aren't my cup of tea. It did cross my mind, you know. If he isn't busy with his freelance work, I'd probably ask him too. Actually, you two would have been spared if Isabella was here, but... Why not just skip out on it? The world's not going to end if one guest doesn't show up. Trust me, I'd love to. But I promised Mom I'll be there. Still can't say no, huh? <laughs> like you're any better. Besides, the person who sent this is an old friend of Mom and Da. If it's important to them, why not? Though, who would have thought, huh? The famous Evans heir used to be tutored by my parents. Apparently, we also met before. Wait, who? Evans. Hannah Evans. Well, she's already married. She goes by Hannah right now. Remember the couple who bought the mansion Isabella's selling? The same people? As far as I know. Unless I misread their address, or there's another Hannah Wright in this city that we don't know about. Let me see that. Without waiting, he walks closer and takes the invitation off my hands. Gently, but with the same force of urgency in his voice. I don't know what he finds in it. But his eyebrows draw together as his eyes scan through the little lines of text printed on the small piece of paper. His hold on the envelope tightens with each pass, and by the time he has finished reading, his mouth was, has formed into a thin line. You never mentioned this. We met just once. Or at least, that's what Mum told me. Honestly, I can't recall anything from it. Otherwise, I would have told you about it. He hums something inaudible under his breath, all while thumbing the paper, staring at it as if doing so will pr prefer him answers to every unspoken question in his head. When he gleans nothing from it, he merrily folds the envelope back to its form. Alright, I'll go with you. What? I'll go with you. That shouldn't be a problem, right? Unless you've already made up your mind about asking Z-Man. No, I told you already, the guy's busy. Why would I bother him for this when I can go alone? But what about your... your own work and... and... Jeez, Rebecca. I can make time for this. Three o'clock, yeah? I'll pick you up an hour or so before. My head reels, less from what this implies, more from how easy all these seems for him. How fast this turnaround is. 
is already halfway down the stairs when any semblance of, any of sense returns to me and I can finally string two words of protest together. Yet, all of it dies on my tongue at the small smile he shoots me. He disappears from view seconds later. His footsteps gradually fading as he descends the stairwell until I all I can hear are my own shallow breaths and heartbeat, loud, pounding hard against my chest. It is only after I'm standing alone in my room minutes later that it sinks in. He has taken the invitation with him, but besides that, more than that, he has also accepted mine. Calling this happiness is a complete understatement. For now, looming thoughts of the mansion and the woman lay silent at the back of my head. October 28th, Friday the night wears on without further incident, despite the great number of thoughts swimming inside my head. Come morning, there's only a hush, a strange sort of stillness unlike the, the ones greeting me every morn. This one's uneasy, tight with anticipation, like a string stretched thin, merely waiting for the proper time to snap. Granted, it doesn't make any make my day any less pleasant but the edge is there and as expected the second i step out of my flat it comes apart broken by the voices of two squabbling adults echoing from a floor below the quiet was nice while it lasted shame what the hell were you thinking i wasn't ow could you let go but a few seconds later they both ascend the stairs with ashton pulling isabella by her wrist she struggles as she should, but his hold on her remains firm. Freeing herself means having to draw blood as she attempts to pry his hand off with her other one, or using unnecessary force to push herself away, neither of which is better than the other. One could potentially end in an accident, while the other means having to hurt him physically. She has the good sense to realize that at least. However, it doesn't take the desperate edge in her voice when she answers Ashton's temper with her own. So, they go on, none the wiser to my presence. Do you have any idea how much trouble you could get in? That's why I'm asking you for help! Is this what you've been doing these past three days? Because this doesn't make your case convincing, Isabella. Rose died, Ash! I know! Every single person in Luxbur knows! It's on the damn news! But that doesn't mean- People are missing! Some of those are my friends. And BRC's just covering it all up. You can't just barge into my office and expect me to do anything about it, right off the bat. This isn't a children's game, Isabella. We have procedures. We have to follow protocol. There's red tape all over this case for a reason. We sure as hell don't investigate things just because some stupid letter spooked us. Ash, you have to believe me this time. If we don't do anything right now, more people will- It's been a whole week. This stupid letter prank is getting old real fast. I'm sick of it. It was funny the first time, not so much now. You're the only one that can help me with this, Ash. Even Rebecca won't- All right, you two are awfully loud. What's going on here? Both of their heads snap up almost in unison. A displeased frown in on is on each other of their faces, but this is a necessary interruption. What can they do? People still in their units have already taken interest of the commotion, with some taking a peek behind their curtains, while others are bold enough to creak open their doors, if only slightly. If they don't keep it down pretty soon, a landlady will show up. Getting a reprimand from her is the last thing I want to happen. First thing on a Friday morning, even if it, this is hardly my fault. Well, if you want to continue this, you two better do it elsewhere. You're disturbing other people. Don't worry, we're done here. No, we aren't. Becca, I looked it up. I called them. I visited some of them and- Which you shouldn't have done in the first place. Isabella, you're going to create more problems for us with what you're doing. A team has already been assigned to it. Leave it to us. Your precious team is looking at it the wrong way. Becca, it's not just Rose. There are others. The last bit strikes a chord, prod strongly at the memory. 
That vicious smile already etched deeply inside my mind. The image appears clear enough that, at the mere mention of it, I stumble on my own question. W what do you mean? The letter, Rebecca! It's not- It's nothing. If there's really something going on because of that dumb letter, none of us would be standing here. We've all read it, haven't we? But Rebecca's alive. Zack's alive. I'm alive. So for the last time, this isn't a curse. There's a murderer on the loose, and your co-workers happen to be the victims. Give it a rest, Isabella. It's too early for this shit. Don't you think that's too much for a coincidence? Not so much. Most serial killers follow a pattern. I'll tell you about it some other time. And anyway, coincidence or not, the point is, civilians like you aren't supposed to get involved. You're putting yourself in danger. I wasn't chasing after- Will the both of you slow down and stop arguing for a minute? What's this about your co-workers, Belle? Becca, please don't tell me now you believe this shit. Sure, in a heartbeat, I'll agree with Ashton. That's how it has always been, besides having a very good point. Really, they're the very same ones you'll make every time I ask too many questions. But the fact of the matter is, what he wants to hear from me right now is far from what I've been seeing, sensing this past few days. It doesn't matter what Isabella or I believe on our own. Something odd has been happening around me, and that letter she picked up is at the heart of this. But however I respond to the question, in their faces, only one of them will be pleased with it. I wanna say I might have seen her, cause that's the truth. I'm gonna go with it, I'm not even gonna ask. <laughs> <laughs> Ash It was getting good though, yeah, it was. But don't worry, I did get to save where we left off.
So what happened before the crash was we were asked to choose if we would side with what Bella Isabella was telling Ashton or completely denying Isabella even though Rebecca already saw the entity and go with Ashton's but I chose Isabella's side okay because we're all going to tell the truth here <laughs> so there you have it Rebecca will tell you what I mean <laughs> Imagining the look his face doesn't take too much effort. His entire posture shifts the moment my reluctance shows. Shoulders tensing, brows furrowing, eyes gaining a sharp edge. He's already bracing himself from disappointment. It will be a disappointment. Not in a million years did I ever believe I'll be saying this either. I... I might have seen her. The woman Belle's been telling us about. The one she said she saw in the attic. Both of them stare at me like I've grown an extra head. And for a few moments, Ashton looks as if he's about to have a fit. A pause treads at, it he at its heels after. A silence thick enough, one can almost hear a pin drop. You're kidding, right? Do I look like I'm joking? Really, Becca? Not funny. Ash, I'm not lying. Why would I lie about this? Yeah, why wouldn't Rebecca lie about this, Ash? It's been this way since... since the film fest. The past few days have been really odd since we read that letter. Last night, you mentioned Zack hasn't been acting like himself. Maybe you should ask him, too. Or maybe you're all just feeling under the weather. I'm not sick. Don't you think I'd know that by now? Becca, you're starting to sound like Scaredy Cat. Give me a break. Why don't you? I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, you two. Isabella's voice cuts sharply through the conversation, abruptly putting an end to an to the end to the brewing argument. It's all my fault. I can't wait. <laughs> this is all my fault. I I was only hoping I could fix this before before any of you before I I'm sorry for dragging you all into this. She breathes in, deeply studying, and in that moment, something falls behind her eyes as she looks away. I'll fix this. I promise. A quiet resolve. The same one I saw in her that night from three days ago. But this time, it burns brighter. Even Ashton wavers at its sight. When she looks him straight in the eyes, gaze unflinching, gradually his grip on her wrist loosens. Belle, there's nothing to fix. The problem is- Just this once, Ash. Her voice, though small and lacking any force, stops him. Along with it, every sound, every noise dies around us. A hush descending as if the world is waiting for her words. You don't have to come with me. But if I don't do anything, I am going to regret it. She lays a hand atop his, gentle, pleading, almost intimate if one does not consider the circumstances we've found ourselves in. Please. Ashton will never tell us so, will never admit it even to himself, but it is in that short second that his own resolve breaks. The moment the hard edge in his eye softens and his relinquishes his hold on her, letting his hand fall limply to his side. Wordless, wordlessly, Isabella steps back and runs off, leaving only a muttered thanks and a small, lackluster smile. Only after the last of her footsteps fade away does Ashton move, breaking the silence with one of his sharp exhales before reaching up to pinch the bridge of his nose in a gesture of frustration and surrender. Did you really have to tell her that? What do you want to hear from me then? That everything's fine? No, I want all of you to stop putting these ideas in her head. None of it is helping. <sighs> Never mind. Don't worry about her. I'll bring her back here. He's already poised to leave when my own instinct takes over. I reach for him, gripping his elbow with the same 
unyielding grip. The action prompted by voices whispering at the back of my mind. He's already made it clear he's not going to believe me, but he deserves a word of caution. Who knows where all of this will take us, how all of this will end. He shouldn't be caught off guard beliefs notwithstanding. Ash, I... I know you don't believe in those things she's saying. And you know me. I'm less inclined to believe in those things as you do. But I've seen something. There's something strange going on here. You don't have to buy it. If you don't want to listen to me, fine. But please, try to hear her out. It's bad enough that Isabella goes off like this without telling anyone. I'm just worried something might happen to her if she keeps at it. Talk to her, okay? As if she trusts me enough for that. Doesn't the fact that she approached you first about this, instead of me, already say a lot? A different kind of trust, granted, granted implicitly, and never spoken, sometimes too big, too fragile to last. He falls silent for a long moment as he turns it over in his mind. In the end, all he manages to offer is a small nod before he departs, and a promise to, at the least, listen to her without the teasing of the, or the jibes. A favor for me and the least he could do for her. This is as much as I can do for him as well until I've understand what's happening myself. Tonight, hopefully, where this all started will provide the answers I'm looking for. Except the whole thing's off to a bad start and all of a sudden, whatever Isabella claims dwelling in this mansion becomes the least of my concerns. Severely underdressed is a total understatement to describe how I look. Cars worth more than my own apartment and childhood home combined lined the mansion's front yard. Men and women decked out in their best also flock near the entrance. Most are eager for the festivities to start, while some are simply idling about, enjoying the warm afternoon sun before it sets. But once the woman standing at the front porch speaks, their undivided attention immediately shifts to her. Presumably Miss Wright, from the confident manner she holds herself among present company. This, despite keeping a far simpler appearance than the rest of her own guests, or not having her husband beside her. A trait worthy of utmost admiration at best. At worst, she's the envy of every woman, the subject of every gossip and luxury. Welcome! Welcome, everyone! And mom said we could have been good friends. I can't even picture myself mingling with the kind of guests she has. Though I admit, she does seem familiar, now that I've seen her this close. Memories of sitting in a vanity not mine, dr being dressed in clothes too fancy for my tastes. They flit briefly in my mind, until her cheerful tone rises above the buzz of her uh, enraptured audience again. Please, make yourselves at home! I wish I could share her enthusiasm, really. But being surrounded by all this extravagance, for the lack of a better term, merely makes me dread how the rest of the night might go. Also knowing there might be some truth to what lies inside the place helps drive the unease further by a notch. Ashton, on the other hand, Be careful with Shirley, alright? For someone who abhors gatherings like this, he already seems right at home, standing with an air too lackadaisical as he watches the valet dri drive off with his bloody car. Can't you at least act with a bit more shame? Becca, if I find a single scratch on Shirley, there will be hell to pay. Those guys know what they're doing. They're handling cars worth more than your precious Shirley. My disdain has likely shown beyond the tone of my voice, quite possibly in the form of a grimace. <laughs> he chuckles a rare moment where mirth and amusement dance across his features. Try as I might to pull up a stern glare, I can't help but join him instead. There's something in the lightness of it, in how easy this kind of interaction falls into place when we don't let feelings get too involved. 
in spite of being stuck in a situation we're not fond of, it brings back memories. However, the moment doesn't hold. All of a sudden, Ashton grows quiet. Chief? An odd expression flashes momentarily across his face, though he blinks it away before I can figure out what it is exactly. Ashton, what's... Sorry, Becca. I just saw someone I need to catch up with. Longtime friend. It doesn't help that he isn't even making an effort to spare a glance my way when he answers. Instead, they're focused at some point in the crowd. His gaze darting pe between people walking past us until a small frown forms in his face. Oh wait, Ash! Oh, what about- This won't be long. Be careful while I'm gone, okay? I meet the smile he hastily throws in my, my way with a frown of my own. What does he mean by that? But before I can ask already, he has turned his back from me and is walking away, with a single explanation whatsoever. In some desperate effort, I try to catch up to him, if only to know what warranted this sudden departure and his odd warning at the end. Hey, be careful! About what exact- Only for my attempts to be interrupted by a muffled ringing from my pocket. Mom's cheerful voice greets me as I answer. Yes, yes, I'm at the party already, Mom. Yes, I'll say hi to her if I can. The conversation itself doesn't last long. Just a simple hello, a reminder to enjoy the party, and to send their regards to their old student. But when the call ends and I get to look up, Ashton's already heading inside. With a sigh and admittedly a little disappointment, I tuck my mobile back into my pocket and follow after him. So much for a date. Even with familiar company, this is somehow shaping up to a terrible evening. The party hits full swing an hour later. With the host opening remarks given, still no sign of her husband, the poor woman, and the guests promptly fed. The band shifts the melody of a livelier tune. Soon, laughter and the rhythmic tapping of shoes fill the room, all in accordance to the lifting strains of music. It seems fun, I admit. Fascinating at certain moments, the flurry of dancers making the music their own, almost with no care in the world. If I weren't so, in this post, I'd have joined the crowd for a song or two. Going back for now, just gonna. Okay, eat well. There isn't a lack of invitations anyway, plenty of them in fact, with some asking more than once. It's only my stubborn refusal that prevents me from joining them, and I can. A single nod is all it'll take, and the evening would have been far enjoyable for me. But pride and my own silly hopes, the thought of being seen with one of them by him curbs that, as much as I hate to admit it. It's a hard truth to swallow, especially when they're the very person at the center of it makes denial difficult. Can't even spare a minute of his attention or a single glance at me the whole evening. Hell, Zachary might have spoken more words to me. The big guy's busy covering the event to boot. But at least he manages to slip in a conversation or two between takes or a small wave of his hand when he passes by. What's Ashton's excuse? He's been flitting in and out of sight the whole time. One moment, he's hanging around a small group, in another, he's hovering around a string band. Just a second ago, he's wolfing down some deviled eggs with a buffet table, a glass of wine in hand. The next thing I know, he's gone. If I didn't know any better, I'd say he only agreed to come with me for another reason. I swear, the next person who asks, I'm dancing the night away with. Ashton can go fuck himself. You would catch his eye a lot better if you wore nicer clothes, don't you think? 
Her voice almost makes me jump, too focused on the gobshite wandering around the ballroom and my own annoyance to notice. If she's heard any of the profanities I've mumbled, or she is taking notice of my discomfiture, she makes no comment on it, merely greeting me with a smile when I turn my attention to her. Rebecca chill. <laughs> yeah. Miss Hannah Wright gives off a whole different air when she's nothing, not speaking to an audience. She needs to confess to Ashton. Yeah, she does need to confess to Ashton. It's been 17 years, I think. <laughs> Homely, a bit too friendly for my liking. But I guess that comes from being raised in such a, an environment and having to deal with pompous, snooty people. Though I suppose nothing has really changed from years ago. I remember her carrying herself in the same manner during the one and only visit. Does she remember any of it? I won't be surprised if she doesn't. It has taken me a while myself. She's probably met a lot of people like little Becky throughout the years. Might have already forgotten about me or my parents. Oh god. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Just getting too much, yeah. People like her thrive on connections after all. Nevertheless, I return her smile, awkward and stiff as it may be. Didn't realize the housewarming was going to be this uh, fancy. I would have gone with a nice dress if I knew. Oh, you're fine, dearie. It's only really the parvenu, those who climb, that come to these parties all dolled up. Quite the black haired beauty, isn't he? It takes me a while to realize who she's talking about, until Ashton walks by again in closer proximity than any of the times he has done so far this evening. Still without a look of acknowledgement our way, though. Even if Miss Wright speaks loud enough to catch the attention of anyone within earshot. Who, Ash? You know, you really shouldn't have turned down those offers. If I wasn't married, I'd happily go dancing with those young men. But... You said a name. Ash. That's the exquisite lad you've been looking at all this time. I don't know him and I'm the one hosting this party. That must mean you know each other. Is he your boyfriend then? Because that would explain those rejections. This isn't the first time someone has made that assumption. Almost every student I've had in the past, my co-workers, more often than not, assume he is. A few of my neighbors also think we are an item. Not that Ashton has ever reacted to those. He's been quite indifferent about it, in fact. Still, the heat of a blush creeps up my cheeks, a denial ready, despite wanting it to happen so badly myself. What? No, that's ridiculous. He isn't my boyfriend. Such a violent reaction. A simple no would have sufficed. Many here would be happy to hear it. And I haven't been looking at him. I do my best to summon a straight face, but for her good cheer, it easily falters. That's right. You've been staring. Quite heatedly, in fact. Although I'm not sure if you look like you want to kiss him or kill him. It's more the latter, currently. Just don't go murdering him on my property. I don't want to walk into a room and suddenly find a body. There. It's in fact true in a way. No sooner I find myself enjoying our chat more than I've imagined myself to. Although her attention briefly wavers at one point, she remains a good companion. Even more once I've mentioned who my parents are, her face quickly lights up and fondness graces her face, despite the meeting from several years ago being a short one. But of course, there are some things we really can't avoid talking about. After all, it's one of the few things I remember her asking me the moment she spotted little Becky in the room. Do you have a boyfriend? In retrospect, it's an odd thing to talk about as children when there are loads we could have started with. Yes, oh, I remember you! You were the cutest little thing with glasses! And when we met, you were having boy 
troubles with this lab called something with an A. I believe I still have the clothes she gave me. Chosen all so I could impress him. And even back then, Ashton has always been denser than a rock in that one attempt to get him to notice backfire spectacularly. Sure, he's keen. He's a detective, for heaven's sake. But feelings, more often than not, escapes him. What was it again? Aaron, Alan, Adele, Albert, Alexander, Andrew? Which makes this whole talk all the more embarrassing. And the more names she lists off, the more my discomfort grows. Until my smile turns into a grimace. What will she think of me? Here she is, married to a man she most probably loves at that. While well, I'm stuck in the same place yearning for the same person. Ashton! Ash! That man is that boy! The same one. Oh, goodness me, after all these years! I can see why, though. He's quite dashing. Y you don't really need to announce it to everyone with an earshot, you know? Keep it down! I'm so sorry, but it really is cute! She says that, but for a short moment, a hint of pity flickers in her eyes. I take that as a chance to change the subject before anything more can be said over the matter. I haven't even sorted things out for myself. Uh, so, uh, this is a nice party, Miss Wright. Though to be frank, I doubt she'll be so willing to pass this up. The topic has already captured her attention. Please, Hannah is fine. We're friends of a sort, aren't we? We must be friends, seeing as I know about your little infatuation, Becky. Don't you worry, dearie. You'll have your happy ending yet. I'm not too concerned about that, am I? Uh, that's not what I'm looking for. Oh? And what makes you think that? Doesn't everybody want their happy ending? Uh, the idea of happy endings sounds like they're just for fairy tales. And they are, sorta. I don't think you can just sit around, trapped in some tower and hope for the best. If you love them, you have to fight for it, right? You're not just going to sit there and hope that everything will just fix itself on its own. Hypocrisy, that's what this is. How dare I preach about something when it's exactly what I've been doing. And then... And then... I go and act as if I'm entitled to any of it. That, by virtue of us growing up together, he must return whatever I feel for him. That he's not allowed to look at another because I'm the one who has stayed by his side the longest. When the first place, Ashton has always been his own person. This is something I cannot force on him. I can only hold on to this. Take care of it until the time comes I can confess it to him. Great. If he reciprocates, but if he can't. If he won't. Selfish. I've been too selfish. <laughs> but what do I know? I'm sure the daughter of the two greatest professors I've ever known is smart enough to know what she's talking about. At one point, maybe I would have easily agreed to that. However, the past weeks have also seen, seen changes in the way I view things. As nice as these things sound, it turns out whatever I previously know may not even be true for other people, or for myself. It is sobering and almost funny how things I might have said with much certainty before now has doubts muddying each of them. But there will be time to mull about this later, because when a hush suddenly descends in the room, a whole different issue rares. Especially when Luke, fucking Luke, strides into the now quiet ballroom, fashionably late and oozing with the same pompous mien he always carries around with him. Good evening, ladies and gents. Enjoying the party? No, look. <laughs> we were when you weren't here. <laughs> I hope I'm not too late in welcoming you all to the right mansion. Before long, Hannah leaves my side to join him, and it doesn't take a genius to piece it all together. 
It's so inter interesting that although you go back to the same events, you get a different view of how the different characters felt and what they saw for their part. I agree, TJ Roger. I agree. Welcome one and all to our humble abode. Tonight, if you have yet to find yourself in your roles, you are our ladies and lords of the court of your king and queen. If you would excuse my presumptuousness. <laughs> So, enjoy the feast that has been laid out for your senses as we only allowed the best to be served. Enjoy the rest of your night, everyone! His attitude, the manner he carries himself around people, his unfamiliarity with that part of the city. A fucking course. I should have known. Although, I'm partly at fault here. Tabloids and the gossip columns have never ever been really my thing. I should have also expected that wherever Luke fucking right is, some sort of drama will sure follow. He seems the kind of person who revels in it, figures it'll find him on its own, even when he's not asking for it. It happens amid surround of applause and hoots. The people lagging behind the crowd they've gathered does not catch on, until the cheers turn into several scandalized gasps. <gasps> I gasp. <laughs> How can you fucking do this look? Look fucking right. <laughs> I am pregnant with your little bastard. You promised me you'll take responsibility. Oh my gosh, drunk woman, tell us more. God damn it, Luke. I finally got you to talk to me after months of silence, and you do this to me. Ooh, juice. What look being shameless looks like. Oh, I know, right? Look at him. With his glass of wine. What do you mean you're pregnant with? Oh, poor Hannah. Luke, is this true? Lies and slander, woman! Security! Johans, take her out of here before she makes an even bigger fool of herself! As if he has not flirted with... And met Rebecca before Rose Eyes. Yeah, I know. I know. No, no, you do not do this to me. Ugh, fucking. I was so ready to leave my stupid oaf of a husband. Oh my god. I told you to leave that damn wife of yours. Look at her. Does she look like she wants a baby? Does she look like she could take care of a baby? Wow, that was so intense. Like, we've seen this before, but seeing it in Rebecca's point of view is something else. <laughs> the commotion doesn't go further. Despite the drunk woman appearing like she has plenty more venom to spill, in a little while, security shows up escorting her out, apparently. She's the chief in inspector's wife too. <gasps> oh my god. <laughs> the one that's been flirting with Hannah, right? <laughs> they are so effed up. As if this whole thing can't get any more fucked up than it already is. You tell me, Rebecca. <laughs> what a mess. But the damage has been done, and beyond the repercussions this will bring, I'm more worried about Hana. Me too. Me too. Let's go to Hana. Maybe look too. In part, I've seen the man that hides behind his self-importance, and it is someone who cares for the person who stands beside him. I don't care. He's a cheater. <laughs> No matter how questionable that is now. After all, no anger is worse than that of a scorned woman. But and Hana? Well, as refined and well mannered she is in front of their guests. I'm not sure if she'll be all too willing to tolerate this. Her party, her home, her husband, and the woman has just dared to walk over it. Yet when I glance at her, there's only defeat, a weary slump on her shoulders, and a certain depth to her breathing. Like the fight has already been drained out of her long ago. I don't know since when this has been going on. I don't know either of them well to judge for myself. 
I'm simply an outsider who happens to have some kind of connection with both of them. But the air of a person who wishes to for respite. It's all too easy to see if it in her as it as she quietly watches the commotion carry on around her. In a moment, before I can think it through, I'm pulling her to the side and waving Zachary over to us. Becca, this is a real me <laughs> Yeah, Zachary, I agree. Oh, hey, Miss Wright. Hello, Zachary. I told you to call me Hana. Did I not? Yeah, you did. Admittedly, this air of familiarity between them catches me off guard. It won't pass it, Hana. It won't pa put it past Hana. Her standing in society compels her to keep appearances, to be nice to everyone, sort of thing. Well, Zachary's growing client base sometimes calls for rubbing elbows with the rich and famous. Although, from the way it appears, this one seems to go beyond maintaining a facade or work. I wonder how this friendship came to be. I'd ask, but we're starting to attract some curious eyes. Most of them are probably searching for more gossip, something to add fuel to the fire. Thankfully, no need to explain it to Zachary. He's aware of the situation all too well. So, this is what you called me for? We gonna get Hana out of here? Yes, yeah, Zachary, please. That'd be great. Soon, he's leading the three of us out of the ballroom. Anyone who dares speak or approach on our way out, I shut down with a sharp glare. In a few steps, we're out, away from the commotion and the suffocating tension. I don't stay along with them though. Even if I want to, Ashton's still somewhere in that crowd. I've got to go back for him at the least. No matter how much the idea of that alone sends an unpleasant twinge in my stomach. Hey, I gotta go back in there. Completely forgot my bag like an airhead. And I'll see if I can tag Ash on the way out. You'll be fine here, right, Hana? Not to worry, dearie. I'll just be right here. Zach will be with you if you need anything. Besides, it seems Zachary can handle this without another person helping out. In fact, for some reason, I've got this strange impression that I might be intruding on something if I elect to remain. Better to entrust this with someone she's comfortable with. And though it might be a little inappropriate considering what has transpired, a smile worms its way to my lips as I leave. Good on them, I suppose. Chatter has exploded throughout the whole ballroom once I return. Worried murmurs, clicking of tongues, and inappropriate gossip filters through the thick tension in the room. Most of them haven't even left the premises and they're already talking about it. Tomorrow, it'll be on the news for sure, in every local broadsheet and tabloid in Lugsburn. No wonder, look, no wonder looks knee-deep into damage control. With this scandalous woman gone, he has turned his attention on the media covering the event. Though so far, he isn't faring well in the cleanup department. Now, now, people, we all know the drill. I'm sure you're all itching to get a start on those articles. Good thing Zachary isn't here. I can't imagine a man of his temper and dealing with someone like him. But if I read one word, see one picture about this come morning, even a single shot of the bloody <coughs> wine glass the harlot held, you will all lose more than your jobs. Luke's diatribe goes on for a few minutes, after which he excuses himself out of the area. There's a brief lull, a reluctant pause, before the place comes Aster again. But shortly, the buzz returns. Dancers have once again taken to the floor and their guests' excited talk begins anew. But I couldn't care less about any of this now. Simply standing in the middle of it already gives me a headache. When the shock has faded, I just feel bone tired. I've accomplished nothing of what I've come here for, and apparently Ashton's disappeared sometime during the commotion. I'm not sure what pisses me off more. 
that he ignored me the whole evening and might have just left without saying anything or knowing he obviously has some sort of mo other motive for being here. Can't he at least trust his own friends for that? It didn't have to lie to me. It's the last straw. No longer in the mood, I grab my bag and head out, more than ready to end the disastrous night as eerily as possible. As it turns out, the night isn't done with me yet. Because no sooner has the porter closed the door behind me, I find myself standing alone in the foyer with one look right. No sign of Hannah or Zachary. Just him and the agitated clicks his shoes make. While he treads around the empty room. Away from the media's prying eyes and their guests judging stares, it's easy to glean how much this candle has, take has him shaken. Not to the point where he has utterly lost his composure, he appears to have mastered himself enough not to. But an ample opening is there for a nervous edge to show on the lines of his shoulders. What do you know? The man is not as tough as he makes himself out to be. Sure, I've seen this before. Briefly in that one second in the hallway at school. It's a strange matter, however, to witness this out in the open. Behind closed doors, this is the real look right. Though maybe that's because he hasn't noticed my presence yet. Busy as he is with thinking. If he's aware, I doubt he'll be acting like this. His pride is one thing he will always wear with him. Even now, when I place a gentle hand on his shoulders and he whirls around to face me. There's a second long moment of anger flashing across his features before it dissolves into confusion. He tucks it away as quickly as he can, but it does nothing to change the impression I've built of the man in my head. Daisy, must you be everywhere? We've only met three times, Luke. Quit the dramatics. Besides, shouldn't you be aware of who gets invited to your party? If I was, there wouldn't be any of that scene tonight. That munter wouldn't even get an inch within this property. I'd better off Luxport if I could. He probably pawns everything off to their servants and Hannah. Pompous, elitist douche. Did you just come out here to lecture me about it? Because, Daisy, I can already feel one coming tomorrow. I don't need to hear one from you tonight. You are a very unpleasant man. <laughs> so I've been told. Will that be all? If so, I suggest you go back and join every bloody goss in that room. Not everything. As unpleasant and frustrating talking with this man is, he deserves the benefit of the doubt at least. The questions and criticisms aren't lacking, of course. But right this is instant, there's only one that comes to mind. Okay, what should we say? Do we ask him if it's true? Or do we say that he should be with his wife? <laughs> oh! oh my god, look. Oh, there's something in the journal. Nice. Ooh. Expose him? How do I expose him? Like, do I ask if it's true? Oh my god, this is so weird. Oh, so like the friend bar is this like thing. <laughs> let's let's say, because seems like he doesn't care. Ask him about the incident. Okay. Is there some truth to it then? <gasps> what do we do? Oh my god. <laughs> To his credit, he does appear extremely offended and repulsed by the notion. 
His mortified expression alone answers the question, but I want to hear it from him, even if he takes nothing short of a derisive tone just to answer that. One, yes, we answered one. <laughs> Daisy? Oh, Daisy. If you believed every scandal that came along, I'd have a hundred children already. Do me a favor and give me a break. I get enough of this false shite from the tabloids. Quill, I'm sorry for asking. I just wanted to hear it from you, douche. And now that you've heard it, does it change anything? Are we going to start seeing miracles now? A solution to poverty? <gasps> Pigs flying in the sky! Uh, is some friendly concern such a hard thing to comprehend for you? He pauses at that. Suddenly, he doesn't know what to do with his hands, and in the end, he simply stuffs them back to his pockets and socks. I'm not too shocked it, it has caught him off guard. There probably aren't many people who tell him that. He's a difficult man to get along with. Zachary probably won't want to be anywhere near him, despite the man having the patience of a saint. Ashton, he can tolerate, maybe. Though I highly doubt he can keep it up with Luke. Dealing with him requires more than patience. It's a huge mystery why I still bother. When the awkwardness passes, mostly coming from him, he merely glances away. Oh, he's flustered. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't look like it. <laughs> Maybe. I don't need your stupid friendship. Oh, wow. Such a loner for a rich man. <laughs> Good heavens! I really want to ask how Hana's able to deal with you. He is interested and can tell from the frown he shoots my way. He's likely wondering how I've ended up knowing her. I'd humor him any other day, probably tease him about it, and keep him guessing just to annoy him if I'm in a good mood. But my own patience is nearing its end. After Ashton, after the whole fiasco here, and now him... He won't even answer my own questions properly. Why should I answer his? Moreover, there are other matters more important than that. His marital problems first and foremost, his attitude follows right after. Concerns aside, I can't help with those. Those are things only he can fix and it's definitely not by standing around here. So, with a slight wave of my hand, I end it right there and walk away from him. Although, I can't resist the urge to glance back before I leave, if only to have one last look at the man he really is. But the instant I turn my gaze on him, I see it. Oh my god! Looming, hovering over his shoulders, drawn to him like a moth to a flame. No way. <laughs> Looks like the ghost has a crushy. <laughs> like the first time I've stepped inside this place in search of Isabella. He was there too, wasn't he? That man, along with his wife, and another person, Miss McCullough. And that shadow. No. A woman now. Her, no longer a dark blur. Terror rushes through every vein in my body. A crippling sensation gripping every part of me. While well, she stares at me with a glare filled with nothing but hate and venom. It's like staring at the eyes of a woman I have unknowingly rubbed off something precious. I try to say something. A warning. But before I can gather my wits and voice it out, someone shuts the door behind me. As if to keep outsiders away from the secrets this mansion possesses. The brush of fresh air against my cheeks does little to dampen the chill in my bones. Yikes. Yeah, definitely yikes. By now, the sensation, the fear, and disquiet, it leaves whenever I see her. It's familiar enough for me. Already, it has made a home in my nerves. I don't even notice my trembling hands until I cross my arms across my chest. The cold from the tips of my fingers seeps through the thick material of my shirt. 
neither of it helps bring together some semblance of coherent thought in my head. But I know. I know I should. Someone has to tell that dude. Fear can cripple me again. It's not wise. Returning that, that is. Especially after what happened. But Hannah's still an old friend and Luke? Luke doesn't deserve whatever mis- I can't just leave those two in there. Isabel is right. She's real and who has read that. Becca, where'd you go off to? If we're done here, let's go. My mistake. The second his voice cuts through the crisp night air is that I've allowed my annoyance get the better of me. Fuming, purpose forgotten, I whirl around and march towards him. One accusation after another piles up at the tip of my tongue, ready to be heard any moment. There's no hesitation holding me back when I fling it at him. That straight face he keeps as I do so doesn't help temper my anger either. It only makes me want to slap some more sense into him. Shouldn't I be the one asking you that? Becca, I've been waiting here the whole time. I told you I hate parties like... And before that, where have you been the entire evening? Right then and there, I might have forgiven him if sh he's shown some ounce of remorse for leaving me like that. Maybe he could have looked away, given me a sign that my assumptions might be right. He doesn't even need to put them into words. A single gesture of confirmation is all I need. Rather, what I get is the same impassive look. He does that whenever he can't disclose anything. He does that whenever he's lying. In the face of it, amidst the thick tension, a frustrated huff is the only thing I can summon. Be that way. Fine. Suit yourself. No more words. After everything I've seen in- yeah. He pauses, his brows fearing and lips curving into a slight frown. I can almost see the gears turning in his head while he tries to piece together everything he wants to say. Before, perhaps I might have waited patiently for those. He's not a man fond of using words to express himself more often than not. Any gesture of honesty will only come out blunt and coarse when forced. But today, for one reason or another, I simply can't summon that forbearance. Ashen, if you're just going to waste my time again... Becca, listen. <coughs> I don't know how else... That much is obvious. Why don't you just take the whole bloody night? Go on. I can wait until next year. Better yet, why don't you just keep it all to yourself like you always do? It's not like... Rebecca, will you hear me out first? The silence I can offer him, but whether I believe what he's about to say is still up for debate. A very long debate. I honestly don't know how else to put this. I'm aware your parents have some mm. kind of history with Hana mm. Wright, and somehow you're friends with her. But you should stay away from these people for now. Especially the husband. Who? Luke? His expression deepens into a scowl at men my mention of the name. But whatever opinion he has, he doesn't immediately voice. Still, something about it has greatly displeased him, evident in the stiff note his tone assumes. Yeah, he's... he's bad news. It's my turn to frown this time. What does he mean by that? Okay, what did you choose? What does he have to do with this or care to explain your reasons? I feel like the second one would be more appropriate. <laughs> I will save, just in case. Let's say you care to explain your reasons. Care to explain your reasons? Okay, what is what happened? Okay, cool. 
<laughs> I've not meant for it to sound as harsh as it does, but anger and frustration have never been a good match in me, particularly nights like this. It's not surprising when Ashton jerks back as if I've struck him. Second? Yeah, he chose second. For a fleeting moment, something akin to hurt darts across his features, his eyes narrowing and hands closing in tightly into a fist at his sides. Then, swiftly, he glances away and shifts his focus on the line of trees nearby, like an answer can be gleaned from the dark expanse. I'm... I'm really sorry, Becca. What is it for? For the party? The vague answers he continues to give? Did it include all those times before this, the year's worth of it? I don't doubt its sincerity. However, at the moment, the forgiveness he's asking isn't something I'm all too willing to hand fears as I am. It's frankly a wonder how I can keep myself from raising my voice at him. We'll talk about this tomorrow, and you better have a proper answer for me by then. There's a brief hesitation before I step away, a short moment of wanting to say more, of waiting if he has anything to add. He's only silent, eyes still trained at a distance. It is the last glimpse I see of him before I climb inside his car. If the door slams closed with the same force as the anger I'm holding, its sound merrily vanishes into the night, unnoticed. He follows soon after, and shortly we're on our way back to the city. Yet, even with the city's bright lights welcoming us, the dense, somber air from the mansion still lingers. The moon is almost at its highest by the time we reach Salem Well. Even after our respective heads have cooled off, the atmosphere within the car remains rife with unspoken tension. This isn't a problem so easily fixed with a few handshakes. Quite frankly, I don't know what will. Ashton himself has no idea what to do when he alights and dawdles awkwardly in the middle of the car park, unsure. It almost seems like he's having an internal debate, whether he should say goodbye or mutter another apology. I could have driven him away, purely out of spite the second I've gotten off. Still, old habits die hard. It's late and Ashton's flat is on the other city of side of the city. Irritation might still rear its head every time I look at him right now, but I'm not too cruel to put him up another long drive. Especially when he still appears as if he hasn't gotten any rest. You can borrow the couch. I throw the keys to my flat, his way before a protest forms in his, on his lips. Although he catches it with ease, he eyes it with a wary expression and shoots a puzzled glance my way. You haven't been forgiven. We're still going to have that talk, believe me. But I'm not about to send you out on another drive looking like that. It's late. Go get some rest. We're setting aside a lot of loose ends like this. But he appears to have accepted that reason, at least in the meantime. He does give me another questioning glance when I shove past him, pulling my mobile in the process. Where are you going? I thought... You go ahead upstairs. I need to contact Professor Andrew. Andrew? Why would you... Oh, no. Please. Is this that thing Isabella said this morning? Again? I already gave her my word, Becca. I'll look into this BRC crap. No need to drag the old guy into it. Of course, he's still skeptical. It makes one wonder if he's even seeing anything at all. Figures this curse will stay away from the scuffer. But this is another loose end tonight that I can't just leave alone, Ashton's beliefs notwithstanding. It just so happens that it's one I can delve into using means other than taking a look at the mansion itself. Ashton? Do you really think I still give a shite after that stunt you pulled tonight? No, but this is... I've spent so many years with him to know this is about to turn into another argument. 
Before he can finish it, I cut him off with a firm raise of my hand. Look, I don't care. There are weird things happening around here. And yes, it's Isabella's brand of weird, ghostly voices, strange sounds, and a bloody woman sitting at the back of my car. You don't have to believe me. And I no longer have the patience to convince you. So just, just leave me be, Ashton. He doesn't push it, growing quiet instead. Although I know he has a whole case of it prepared inside his head. But there's a reluctant shift in his movement when he steps away from our conversation. Short of climbing the stairs, he stops, turns to face me with an expression almost too... conflicted. Are you really sure? What? That there was something? That you've been, uh, seeing things? Yes, I'm very, very certain. Now go, and you better not break anything in there. The last time I let you stay over, it was that statuette Belle gave me. You haven't even replaced that one. The last of my reprimand goes both unheard and unanswered as he disappears behind the stairs. If things aren't as strained, he might have a quip or two about that followed by a light banter. Instead, for a long moment, I am left staring after him. There's something in the way he asked in the next. Coupled with his expression, the whole exchange just feels unsettling. One that doesn't fade even as I gather my thoughts and shift my focus on another, even as I dial Professor Andrew's number. And that is when it clicks. During the long wait for the professor, one stray thought emerges from the unease. Ashton has not intended for his question to be a jibe. It's concern. For what, though? For my well being? The letters curse? The woman I mentioned? He answers for those who'll have to wait, however. Finally, the call connects and Professor Andrew's voice echoes from the receiver. Uh, Professor Andrew? After all, this is a more pressing matter. Our lives might be at stake and we're still in the dark. Actually, I was wondering if I could ask you to do me a favor. October 30, Sunday. Professor Andrew Clark has agreed to meet me but two days later in front of Lugshburn's public library. He has other commitments, but being a longtime family friend has its perks. I have my parents' connections to thank for that. Of course, I'm not the sort to impose on him often, but the situation is... Well, it's not entirely bad, although it does require calling in a few favors from friends like him. Without his signature, I won't be able to gain access to the library's restricted section. If I want to get more in-depth information on the Ermengarde mansion, that is, not simply what they choose to show to the general public. As much as I hate to admit it, there's always something people censor, and whatever it is, they won't ever find it in the general section. It has to be what they're keeping here, beyond the public eye. The thought of the, that alone makes me antsy. Thankfully, I don't have to brood over it. The wait for the professor doesn't last long. He never did enjoy making people wait. Likewise, he dislikes people who are tardy. He arrives five minutes left after I do, greeting me with that kind of smile and casual wave of his hand. I haven't seen him in so long, but it appears he hasn't changed much. His familiar presence alone is enough for a fond smile to spread across my face. Professor Andrew. Rebecca, didn't I say long ago you could drop the professor? You know I can't possibly do that, even if I can. It feels disrespectful to call you by your name alone. Both you and Ashton never listen to this old man. Kids these days. All right. But, just for today, since you're doing me a huge favor, Andrew. <laughs> I guess you simply can't have it all, even at this old age. But, 
Pleasantries aren't what we're here for, yes? You mentioned you needed a permit. I... yes, sir, if that's okay with you. More than fine. Anything in pursuit of knowledge, as they say. He hands me the permit without further prompting. And just like he promised, he's also written a recommendation after his signature. This is more than enough to get me to those files. I mutter small things before slipping it into my pocket. Although when I look back up, his brows are fair, the very face of curiosity. Not surprising considering how vague I've been during our little talk over the phone. Right then and there, I've decided to tell him if he, asks, if he ever asks. Maybe not all of it, but stuff he needs to know. If it's the least I can do to thank him. As expected, through to his inquisitive nature, he asks. If you don't mind, though, I know you've always been an eager learner. But may I know what in the restricted section that piqued your curiosity? Uh, it's the Amon God Mansion, sir. His quick raised to an eyebrow at that, and for a while, I fear he'll take the slip of paper back. Is there something in what I said? The ones they have out in the general isn't enough? I'm, uh, hoping for a more in-depth read, sir. More about the history and the people who once lived there. The general section doesn't have anything much on that. Oh, I see. Well, you certainly aren't the first one to be enamored with that place. It doesn't shock me. The architecture is admirable, and the urban legends are something to talk about. I think enamored might be a little too much to describe our interest in it, but I have to agree. The mansion is beautiful, even with the renovations. They kept the stained glass windows, too. They are magnificent. Oh, you've seen it. I was there for a few hours to attend a housewarming party. The invitation was for my parents, but they couldn't make it. My mom used to work as a private tutor for the Evans. Hannah Wright? Ah, I know of her. Her husband, too. Who doesn't? Luxborn's most popular couple. Something falls behind his eyes, the warmth in them suddenly gone like he's reliving a painful distant memory and seeing it play right in front of him. It disappears almost as soon as it surfaces, but the look has unsettled something in me. Is something the matter? Uh, nothing much. But you know, you're already mm -hmm. like a daughter to me. <coughs> so if you could, do be careful with the friends you make. Is this about the right, sir? <laughs> Just a friendly advice from an old man. Don't think much about it. Anyway, I have to leave now. Can't miss my weekly serving of bear claws. Say hi to your parents at the detective inspector for me, will you? I wish you luck with all that research. I will. Thanks for this, Andrew. Andrew gives me a shoulder, a, my shoulder a light squeeze. The gesture a younger me has always appreciated and quickly crosses the street after. I watch him until he disappears behind the door to a cafe until the doubt swimming inside my head finds a moment to rest. Whatever his business is with the rights isn't anything I should concern myself about. But somehow, in the grand scheme of things now, all of it feels oddly relevant. The how, though, I've yet to find out. And I'm hoping the library will give me the answers I want this time. On a gloomy Sunday morning, the library is especially empty. The second floor in particular. I've always considered this place to be a sanctuary. I was pied away from the hubbub of the city. As a child, I grew up reading books here, spending hours here to no end poring over the pages, living out fantasies in my head until my parents called me home. Now it feels nothing like it. The silence is mothering, suffocating, even with how clean they've kept the microfish room. How the entire small of it lacks a speck of dust or clutter. Breathing is a struggle for air. Not far into my stay, I begin to long for the noise outside and perhaps a way, as a way to calm these unease, I start to hum a tune. Imagine that. 
why of all things it has to be the silly nursery rhyme I've not an inkling oh my god why would you do that to yourself it does its job however it fills the lull with something far less awkward far less deafening and that is enough for a distraction I have business here no time for silly daydreams only important work to attend to even if there's a possibility of being fruitless by some means it feels like I have to do it, if not for me, then for the people who have been affected by this. This. What do you even call this? A haunting? A Halloween prank gone wrong? A curse? If Isabella were here, what would she say? Will she panic? Will she be angry I only listen to her now? It all stems from that one moment in that movie house, doesn't it? We could have avoided this we this had we've only taken her warnings to heart. One stupid mistake is all it took to send our normal lives on a downward spiral. <laughs> oh hell no. <laughs> Frankly, I'm no longer sure if I'm angry at myself for it or at the universe for throwing us into this mess. But we can only make do of what little we have, and that's exactly what I'm doing. Going here might not be the right decision, but it's a start. A good start. It doesn't take much time for me to find what I need. A microfiche of old newspapers, long kept in a special storage cabinets at the far end of the restricted section. The year is 1620s and beyond. Before the city of Luxburg even exists in the small records, the mansion has just been built. And Danslem is nothing more but a small sleepy hamlet near a river. A lot of pieces are missing days, sometimes several consecutive weeks without any records remaining, often ghosts on for years. Troublesome, but as it is, I'm lucky enough to find anything at all considering how far I'm looking back. Can't be picky now. Can't waste time mewling over what record keepers of the old could have done to make the, this a breeze for me I still work with this the faint wear of the microfish machine keeps me company as i go over each slide each image hoping for some what the local lore knows there are snippets little mentions of the family that once settled in the house here and there the usual singing of praises for the couple who helped broth up with what was once a tiny settlement into a buzzing town nothing substantial nothing i didn't know before it continues on like this for a good while until i come by the years after their deaths the people of Anslem might have loved lord william and lady elizabeth ermengard mourned their passing and held them in high esteem in the years after but it was their daughter that was remembered fondly by the townspeople. It's her parents built this town. Lady Charlotte was the one who made it prosper. Remarkable, considering it was a period of recovery from a bout of plague that killed half the town's population, including her parents. But surprising, though, I have to save. <laughs> What's surprising though, apparently her time also marked more than superficial changes to the place. She moved things, changed laws, altered old costumes and traditions. If they were done on a woman's whimsy, it doesn't say, but she seems capable enough for more than that. The gist of it is, the town she rebuilt, it's what eventually grew to become Luxembourg City. Well, the nearby Anselm village remained as it was, a relic of the old. A frown swiftly forms in my face. So, why is there a need to hide this? One by one, I try to recall every lesson I've gone through, every book, paper, and journal I've read. None of those ever mentioned this. It's always the lord and the lady of the house, the endearing child always an afterthought to those anecdotes, the one who always took her life in the end. 
Never someone who restored a town from the brink of collapse or brought new ideas to it. Is it because she's a woman? Oh, that pisses me off. Granted, not everything is sunshine and rainbows. Not all aspects of her can be considered admirable. But this is history. Some parts are bound to naturally delve into unpleasant territory whether I like it or not. Witch hunts, for example, became common near the end of her life. Which would have been completely unremarkable. And might have gone to become a mere footnote in history if it didn't involve Lady Charlotte and the very slave she saved. It cost quite a stir enough to leave almost a week's worth of clippings. The girl was eventually burned, condemned by an entire town at the word of Lady Charlotte alone. But this doesn't really have anything to do with this curse, does it? Unless the woman following us and this slave are the same person. A tale of revenge, how cliche. However, with the lack of accurate photographs, it's impossible to tell. Maybe if I squint, the illustration would start resembling her. But in my field, it doesn't work that way. It shouldn't work that way. I'll be the laughing stock of the community. Uh, this isn't going anywhere. Mentally exhausted, I take a careful step away from the screen, pressing a palm to my tired eyes. The lack of ample light in this area doesn't help. A headache already threatens to form at the back of my head, yet I'm nowhere near figuring things out. This is simply too much to take in all at once. I should have asked for someone's help. Now, I'm at a dead end. I start gathering everything around me and placing them back in their respective envelopes for storage. The motion's no longer new after volunteering here a number of times. I didn't make much mess anyway, considering the lack of materials available to begin with. I'll have to look somewhere else. The wear remains unknown though, but it, just as I'm about to slip the last slide, last of the slides in, something catches my attention. My hand pauses the microfish halfway through the, its protective sleeve. This is one of the few I've set aside without taking a careful look at. It seems like a gossip column at first glance, but upon closer look. I slide it back to the reader, gently turning the dials in search of the page. It takes some time, but once the image becomes clear, I must have had this drawing commissioned for this annou announcement. I don't doubt it. The details are far more intricate. Their, their likeness likely closer to how they might have appeared at the time. They're both recognizable this way, closer to those paintings I've seen in the mansion. However, it's the man standing beside her, Edward Godfrey. According to the article that caught my attention previously, her first cousin and eventually her fiancé, oh my god, <laughs> I mean it's nothing new from the past, but oh my god. <laughs> maybe it's the posture, the manner in which he holds himself, or maybe it's the shape of his eyes, though I can't be too certain about the un- that until I've gotten a better reference. Nevertheless, there is a resemblance. He looks eerily like. My head snaps, glaring at whoever's running in the floorboard above. Oh, oh my god, I have to save. I have to save. I have to fucking save. <laughs> I have to save. <laughs> Any day I'd march upstairs and reprimand whoever it is. This is a library for heaven's sake. Hello, Ali. But now isn't the time I've gotten what I need. Without wasting another minute, I hit the machine's print button for a copy on the page, while my other hand moves to put everything back into storage. A ragged exhale slips from me. Relief, perhaps. Or maybe this is already exhaustion. Regardless, soon I'm closing my eyes as I wait for the printer to finish, if only to save to stave off a headache pulling up from everything oh my god <laughs> why <laughs> despite my doubts about this 
despite all the tension in my shoulders. This may be a small fine, but at least I can start somewhere. We can start somewhere. There's a way out of this. I know it. The printer sputters to a halt. However, its sound isn't what makes me snap my eyes open. A feeling chilly brush of air behind my back. I have to save this one. <laughs> I know, cause... <laughs> Holy shit! I don't know what to do! Uh, brief enough for something sickening to suddenly lodge itself in my throat while I take in my surroundings. It's that suffocating sensation again. Creeping to every part of me, crawling under my skin. Drained me little by little of any strength. From the day in the pension, from that brief moment at the school, without delay, I grab the papers and make a quick beeline for the door. Ah! Bitch! My whole body freezes. Oh yeah, your body should freeze. You know. What are you doing, Miss Pink? I hold my breath, not daring to make any noise. For a little while, only the sound of papers crumpling under my grasp fills the room. The excitement from earlier gone is instantly, replaced by a cold seeping dread spreading throughout my limbs. But more than the fear is the anger. It pains me to hear her using my own student's voice against me. More than once I believed it was really her! She has no right. Why don't you play no. with me? No! I don't want to play with you! Although she hasn't made a move, if there isn't a wall behind me, I'll probably take a step back. Anything to put a distance between us, no matter how small, as long as I'm out of her reach. But I steal myself. Because if I do fall back, turn away from her, I'll be left with no way out. Oh, I have to fucking save it! Oh my god, I have to save it. I have to save it. I have to save it here. I am not dying here. You, you think you scared me? And you aren't getting into an early grave without a fight! C -c Come at me! Oh my god! No. <laughs> I expected she'll lunge through to me, but the monster she is! Instead, all she gives me is smile, twisted and gnarled. It's as if time has crawled to stop at the side of it. A split second decision. And before I know it, my body shifts, eyes closing, attention, hand grabbing, whatever. It's all enough nearby to one hurling it at her. Wait, what the fuck? Smart guy run. My legs can carry me despite my heart starting to burst out of my chest. But in the midst of bookshelves and white people, head for the door. <laughs> if there's one, it is out of the this room. Out of this place as far away as anyone can get from her. I can't think about the rest of what I can do after I'm outside when there are other people I can ask for help. When she's not chasing me after like this. There's no hesitation in my steps as I race through the restricted section door, head downstairs and barrel straight for the library's exit. Tow towards safety and a desperate bid for my life, library rules be damned. I can no longer hear her behind, but I'm not taking any chances. A breath almost escapes me as I near the door. A little more, when out of nowhere, a library cart carries from a blind corner and slams to my sides. Fuck! My back hits the floor with a hard thud, the impact completely knocking the breath out of me. Book it? I book it. Okay. The, the copper tang of blood gradually spreads over my tongue as I fight to get my bearings back. I force myself to move, even with the excruciating pain coursing through the limbs. The things are so really good, but there's a moment to respond. What do I have to do? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Through my blurred vision, I can only... I can... Oh, fuck, fuck, fuck. Oh, fuck. Through my bird vision, I can only make out the hateful glim and the spite in her eyes as she looms over my body and grip on my throat grows tighter. This vision kicks in. My nails dig into her wrists as I struggle against her firm grip, trying to pry her fingers away. Wait, what do I do? 
Oh, get to slide it to the green bar. What? 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 What do I do? Bitch! What? No! No! Oh, what? I don't get it. No! 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 That's not fair. Continue. I don't get it! What the hell? <laughs> Wait, what? It, it doesn't tell me what keys I should be. Oh, it's gonna be a long while. I'm not even scared of her anymore. What the hell? I don't get it. I don't get it! <laughs> okay, what? Is it the mouse? <laughs> uh. <gasps> oh my god, it was the mouse! <laughs> Wait, really? It did say move the mouse? <laughs> my limbs are moving on their own before, but I could did could fully register in my brain and my lungs could recover i wasn't reading anything i was just looking at her behind me she lets out a cry sharp loud and thunderous against the empty walls of the library but the fear her wails bring compares nothing to the relief washing over me when i finally make it out my knees buckle up as soon as my feet hits the pavement its surface cold and hard hard against my skin i've only been in there for a few hours about one or two probably it literally says move the mouse to how easy one hit ko <laughs> i thought your mouse malfunctioned no my brain malfunctioned that's what happened <laughs> I don't know anymore. It feels like an eternity all the same. My breathing hasn't slowed down yet, and I don't expect it to after going through that. I probably look the most undignified creature on a Sunday morning. Right now, out of breath, disheveled, slumped here with a bloodied lip and all. But at present, I simply can't bring myself to care, even when a few passersby start giving me a strange looks. Stay at me all you want. I don't give a single shite. Yeah. I'm alive. I'm safe. This isn't the end yet. But I'm safe. And inside my bag is something that could get us out of this mess. Nothing definite yet. I don't want to get my hopes up. But it's still something. If Isabel is here, I'm sure she'll feel the same. She'll even be the first one who'll put her fate on it. Wh wherever this will lead us to is a victory on its own now all that's left is to find the others the rest of us trapped in this bloody nightmare right on cue as if an answer to my previous thought my mobile phone lets out a beep i pick it up simply hoping it'll be one of them only it's a voicemail that greets me from ashton there's a pang of disappointment, of course, but it brings some re reassurance that nothing's happened to at least one of them. Hey, Becca, call me back when you're free. We need to talk. ASAP. He ends it right there, the message less than a minute long, curt and gives nothing away. I let it ease my worries regardless as and do as he asks. Because this, too, is another triumph for us. One less thing to worry about. Oh my god. What? Oh, nice. We did it. You guys, we did it. Oh my god, that was quite a rush. I didn't even see that I had to use my m mouse for it. We did it. Yay. Wow. We did it, guys. 
Congratulations, Rick. Rebecca lives. Yay, yeah, Rebecca lives. I can't believe how long Rebecca's chapter is. Because, like, most of them only have, like, three three hours at least to i mean at most to get finished but like rebecca's like more than five hours i think like more contents to rebecca's good job yeah not a good job for like not reading what the prompt do well that's it for tonight guys i'm so glad that you were able to let rebecca live and somehow up his i mean her relationship with ashton so i am going to stream again tomorrow to finish ashton's hopefully finish ashton's but if it's still not enough then maybe i'll just do half but thank you guys so much for being here and for actually waiting for me for like a week of not being able to stream i really appreciate you guys for being here today thank you so much and i'll see you on the next one oh and don't forget to click like and subscribe and turn on the notification bell to see more of my content and for more unhinged books thank you and good night bye bye